Assistant Chief Mark McFerrin to provide the invocation. Anniversary of the tragic fire at the Knights of Columbus Hall. Today we pay honor to Lieutenants Greg Pickard and Eric Wallace, who gave their lives in the line of duty. Also, we recognize the strength and courage of firefighters Ricky Manti and Mitch Moran as they've spent the last year healing from the burns they received while attempting to save the life of a brother firefighter. We stand here today before the Bryan Firefighter Memorial Monument. This monument pays tribute to the many Bryan firefighters who have faithfully served this city before us, with some dating back to the 1800s. I want to thank each of you for your support and attendance today. We are blessed to live in such a great community. Your support throughout this past year has helped all of us cope with such a devastating tragedy. Please know that we are eternally grateful for everything you have done for our families. Your prayers, donations, and ongoing support demonstrate the heart and compassion of our community. May God bless each of you. At this time, I would like to ask City Council Member Chuck Condor to the podium. On behalf of the City Council for the City of Bryan, our staff, I want to wish you a happy Valentine's Day. And it might seem odd, but Valentine's Day is honoring St. Valentine. And St. Valentine was martyred and killed for what he believed in. So it's very appropriate today to wish you a happy Valentine's Day. As long as we have men and women for our sake and safety and for what they believe in, and the land of Christ protect us and help us would lay down their life, I am sad, but I am happy that those people walk this earth. So happy Valentine's Day to you. A year ago at the St. Joseph ER, I was touched and honored to see the people and the citizens of Bryan in this great fire department, our police department, our city staff together at the St. Joseph ER, working as a family in one of the hardest moments this city has ever seen in her history. I saw a chief, chief headed out to go pick up Brandy Wallace and bring her back to the hospital. All eyes on Brandy as her husband had passed. And I saw the grace of a woman walk in and carry the entire weight of a city on her shoulders, comforting others, bringing us through this. I saw choppers in the air taking our men to Galveston. The next day we'd lose Lieutenant Pickard. I saw over a month's time, brave, courage, and patience of two young men recovering from their injuries. God, it's good to see y'all. In the last year, families of grief have learned to live with new challenges, and a, fa and a family, the citizens of Bryan and College Station, were surrounded by a family from Galveston, especially. Great to see Galveston here today, represented. And so many others from all across our state, even as far as London, England, we were loved and prayed for. At the time of this happening, I wrote a poem, and if any of you know me, you know it's not going to be short. I'm going to read it to you now. It's called Fireman's Dance. Death, a scary word to some, it is seen as finality, darkness, and a fearful thing. Even the strongest of believers may shudder upon hearing its bell ring. It will be there for us all when we all breathe the final breath. And by the mercy of our Savior, we have no reason to fear death. Yet many of us do, some more than others. No different for our firemen, even in the comfort of their brothers. To help prevent a death, or to rescue, give aid, comfort, and help. To bring safety to the afflicted without regard to themselves. To prevent danger each day, to educate, prepare, and pray. And to be ready, willing, and trained to have what it takes to run into and not away from the flame. So they dance this dance in days of preparation and training to be the hand that pulls us away from fire, 
from the accident or the floods from the raining. And in this dance, death himself sees their selflessness. He admires it and them, and begins to cheer for them to be blessed. To be blessed with a job well done, to be blessed with lives saved, to be blessed with yet another dance with their actions to bring Jesus praise. Death begins to become a friend. He is there, but not inviting them to come. Every death rejoices, even death rejoices upon their duty, carried out humbly, bravely, so they can go home. So even death himself was saddened to see two of these servants fall. He did what he was created for, but it was his saddest call. He had to do what now we all must to get his heart right this day. He had to remember all the times they triumphed over the flame. He had to pray and cheer for the ones fighting through their wounds. He had to break a smile to see the caring for the families in those rooms. He had, excuse me. He had to remember what he really was, a public servant of sorts. He had to do his job because in the end with our dear Lord, he knew death, death is but a vessel for each living in Christ, to render, to render over his time on earth, to join in eternal life. Even while on the cross with death by his side, Christ thought only of others with his last breaths of this life. And even as death himself did, <clears throat> even death himself had to celebrate the defeat handed upon death when Christ our Lord and Savior showered over the grim. Death became just a way to unite us to the face of Christ. And though his job is very tough, death is not the end of life. And so too before us have gone to join Christ this day. And many tears of sadness will flow with tales of praise. Death will be there for us one day. And depending on our life, he will greet us as the fearful end or the passport to eternal life. From John 15, Greater love have no one than this, than to lay down his life for his friends. And in keeping us safe one night, that is what these men did. So to meet death one day, as an old friend and not the end, we can daily lay down our lives and live for those around us, our family and our friends. We can watch over the families of our friends Eric and Greg left here. And in time, as life moves on, we can serve them year by year. We can turn to them out of the blue. We can be the shoulder to help with the strain. We can be the face of Christ in our actions. We can cheer them up or just share in their pain. And when the final bell has sound for each of us one day, we can say we served our Lord and our lives will bring him praise. Well done, good and faithful servants. Your family's now our cause. To live on the selfless calling you answered until the day we are also called. Praise be to God, in good times and in bad. It is divine to have our faith. It is human to be sad. We are made to be one and called to aspire the other. And if you find yourself lost, look to the divine sacrifice of these our brothers. God rest you, Eric and Greg, and may he lift your families up in comfort and peace always. Again, happy Valentine's Day. At this time, I'm going to ask Lieutenant Level McGovern, the podium president of Protection Company Number One. Thank you, Chief. Good afternoon. My name is Lieutenant Bubba McGovern. I'm the president of Protection Company Number One. First, I would like to start with how the Protection Company Number One got started. In 1871, there were two companies organized in the city of Bryan. Hook and Ladder Company, number one, and Engine Company, number one. On May 16, 1871, the Hook and Ladder Company, number one, incorporated. However, the Engine Company did not.
1881, the following amendment to the charter of Hook and Ladder Company Number 1 of the City of Bryan was enacted. Be it known that the Hook and Ladder Company Number 1 of the City of Bryan this day hereby amends and changes. Instead of Hook and Ladder Company Number 1, the name shall be Protection Engine Company Number 1. Shortly after that, in the very early days of Bryan Fire Department, Protection Company Number One was proudly etched on the lantern mounted on our first steamer. It was the symbol under which all concerned members of the fire department rallied, and still today, it remains the byword for caring and fellowship, like it was in those early days. Though the fire department itself has undergone changes and reorganization, one thing that has lasted for the ages is the feeling of comradeship of Protection Company Number One. Now is the association of benevolence and togetherness under which each member belongs. It is a fraternity which stands for mutual protection and support of all members of the fire department. The dues that are still paid to this very day go toward emotional support and assistance for each member and their family in time of need. We also help make the on-duty lives of the members more easily endured during the hours waiting when we are needed most. Protection Company number one is also in charge with honoring our line of duty desk and our retirees of good standings and giving due and worthy recognition to our long serving members. We, the members of the Protection Company number one, also are there as the guardians of the memorial, which stands as a monument to those who have passed before us. The names of previous members in good standings are etched into stone as a reflection to what they have done for the Bryan Fire Department, the citizens of the city of Bryan, and the footprints they have started for us. In 1996, the Protection Company Number One Monument was moved from the city cemetery to this very location. Lieutenant Greg Pickard and Chief James Bland unveiled the Protection Company Number One Monument here at its new resting spot, so it can be viewed and honored by all. As Protection Company Number One President, let it be known on this day, February 15th, the names of Protection Company Member Lieutenant Greg Pickard and Protection Company Member Lieutenant Eric Wallace will be etched into stone, not as a day of sadness, but as a day of reflection. And to what they have done for the Bryan Fire Department, the citizens of the city of Bryan, and the footprints they have started for us. The lantern of the Protection Company Number One stands now and always stand as the beacon which brightens our past, illuminates our present, and is the guiding light to our future. Thank you. God bless. And God bless. This has been, and I know we couldn't have made it through this past year without the support of our community. So once again, on behalf of the Bryan Firefighters Association, I'd like to say thank you. Uh, Mitch, uh, congratulations on returning to work. Uh, we all know the work that you put in, and we're proud of you, and we can't wait to get you back on the engine. Ricky, you have got to be, without a doubt, the strongest man. We're here with you the whole way, and we're going to get you back to work. You've got 120 brothers that have your back. Uh, this past year has been tough. And not a day goes by that we don't think about what happened and who we lost. And every day around the station, it seems that there's little things that always remind us of Eric and Greg. Like when someone makes the sweet a bit too, uh, the tea a bit too sweet, it's always referred to as Wallace tea. Or if somebody yells at a rookie for no good reason, or drives the engine a bit too aggressively, it always reminds us of Eric. And I guarantee you the amount of things not out of people's hands have gone up since the memorial. And to this day, I can't drive by the golf course without thinking about Greg's short game and how much he loved playing golf. And it's these stories and memories that we 
share every day that just reassure me that Eric and Greg will never be forgotten and that they will always be a part of this fire department. always ends with a very hearty laugh. These men made such a significant impact on the Bryan Fire Department. Each one performed their jobs in a way that captured respect and credibility for our organization. Greg and Eric, Greg and Eric were leaders in our department and established themselves as such by going above and beyond what was expected. Each one took on extracurricular roles various programs over the years with a single purpose of making the Bryan Fire Department the best it could be. Both of these men probably wore the badge uniform and led the life with a true service heart. Their actions were always focused on the needs of others rather than their own. While Greg and Eric's contributions to the Fire Department will be felt for years to come, their influence on our personal lives will be with us forever. We both demonstrated how to be men of faith, to love our families, how to be great fathers to our children, and also how to live a life to the fullest. It would be a huge understatement to say that these guys just had a sense of humor. They made everyone laugh, each in their own unique way. We will never forget the joy that these men brought to our lives. And while the sadness and hurt will never go away, each of us should understand how blessed we are to have had them in our lives. We must also acknowledge the relentless efforts of Ricky Manti and Mitch Moran, as they have endured numerous surgeries, procedures, and therapies over this past year. How inspiring for all of us to see the will and determination displayed by these men. Their courage to continue moving forward despite their situation is absolutely heroic. Their love of the fire service and helping others in our community has never diminished. The Bryan Fire Department family could not be more proud of these men. those who have made the ultimate sacrifice, I will ask Assistant Chief Terry Barnett to unveil the new memorial plaques honoring Robert Richard Lopez, who died in the line of duty while battling an apartment fire in 1978, Lieutenant Eric Wallace and Lieutenant Greg Pickard, who died in the line of duty while battling the Knights of Columbus Hall fire in 2013. These blacks 
will be plugged into each of the fire stations and memorialized each one of these individuals. Station one for Lieutenant Eric Wallace, station three for driver Richard Lopez, and station five for Lieutenant Greg Pickard. At this time, I will ask Firefighter Ricky Manti to come forward and place the memorial wreath at the Bryan Fire Department Monument in honor of those who have given their lives in line of duty.
please pray with me. Father, I thank you that you're not a God who's only God on sunny days like today. But in our darkest night, when our enemy sin is the strongest, that you're right there with us. I thank you that you're not going to leave us or forsake us. And I pray for the men and women of the fire department, the fire services everywhere, that you be with them. There would not be another night like we experienced a year ago. We ask that you make the men and women strong to serve their communities and each other. I pray that you be with us. We thank you that we don't have to fear death because of what your son Jesus Christ did. Thank you. ceremony we have a special recognition Mitch has been assigned to light duty the last couple of months with the goal of returning to full duty on the anniversary of the fire. It is with great joy that I announce to you today that Mitch has been cleared to return to full duty. back will be on truck one. Firefighter Moran, report to full duty. the Brown Fire Department Honor Guard and pipes and drums to retire the colors.
This concludes our ceremony. I'd like to thank each of you for being here today, for your support throughout this lecture. Afterwards, we'll fight the drum group playing downtown uh, in front of Murphy's Law. You're invited to attend there. A special thanks to the independent Harley Davidson Freedom Riders for their ride. And sister firefighters, so you see standing around here. All of our stations are staffed today so that all of our people on duty can be here. We couldn't make it each day without the help of our brothers all around us. And again, for everything you've done on behalf of the Bryan Fire Department, we're grateful. Thank you. My name is Chuck Condorla. Spell your last name. K O N D E R L A. And you're the uh, city council member here, Brian? Yes, sir, I'm one of them. Tell me a little bit about today and what it means to the city. Today means everything. Today is the day you come together and, as a city, like we have been all year, and pay tribute to those that do so much for us. I mean, this isn't just a job, a firefighter. It's a, it's a job that you could die doing. And, Two men died last year. Today was about honoring courage and sacrifice. Also, off Firefighter Lopez, who died before them. This is a, it's a day where the city comes together and grieves and also acknowledges the sacrifices made to keep us all safe. These men went into that building last year because there was a small chance that one of us could have been in there and they weren't going to let us die. How are you doing? Thanks for last year, you kind of remember last year what, what this came about. What, what, were, what was running through your head? What were you feeling last year when you saw this? Just unfolding in front of you. Disbelief, pride, and, and deep sorrow. Uh, disbelief that it was happening here. Being at the ER, we were there all night long, getting the, the latest news as it came about what was happening to our men. With three men in helicopters going to Galveston burn unit, not knowing how they would do if they would make it. We lost Greg Pickard the next day. We lost Lieutenant Wallace that night. Stories of how firemen went in after each other to, to bring them out of the fire. Men walking on fire. The room was so hot that everything, even the air, was on fire. And they would not let go of their brothers. They would not let them burn in that fire. And sadly, we lost two brave men and had two men, wonderful men, injured. And as you saw today, Mitch Moran returned to active duty. And I'm praying every day that we see Ricky Manti do the same. How long has it been like before Ricky's I, that'd, that'd be something that's going to be between Ricky, God, and his doctors, I believe. But if it has to do with determination, it's going to happen. The, uh, him returning today, today is one year after this, he returned to work now. I mean, he was ready to go. He looked like he was really ready to get on the truck. Mitch Moran was excited and ready to get on that truck, yes, sir. And he, and he couldn't have done it without Ricky's acting like a big brother the way he did. I think Ricky and Mitch probably have a camaraderie even tighter than anyone else's in the fire department now after what they've been through together. Can you imagine the patience to sit there and let your body heal for months and months like they did? And, and I can't say enough about the Galveston Fire Department as well as all the fire departments in the area. They did not leave the side of our firemen the entire time they were down in Galveston, tending to their needs of their family or the, the firemen themselves. It was really a special, special sacrifice they did for our men.
today. Uh, I mean, one, one of your firefighters, after one year of surgeries and everything else, has returned to work. Tell me a little bit about it. After all the tragedy we've been through uh, in trying to cope with this event, to see him come back and be released on the day of the anniversary, uh, it's just we, we cannot be more encouraged and more happy uh, about, about him being able to come back to full duty, the job that he loves. Tell me a little about last year, what was running through your head. I mean, all this, everything going on at the same time. You know, uh, we know this is a dangerous profession. Uh, we hear of firefighters being killed in the line of duty. Uh, you never really expect it to happen at home. And uh, when it happened again, we just, uh, we had to come to reality with it and step up and do what we could. Uh, thank God we're supported by a tremendous community up here of uh, caring people, supportive people. And uh, it's all that support we received to help us make it through this year. Out here again, it just shows the community that we live in and the support that they have provided us and still providing us a year later. Uh, we couldn't be more proud of, of the, the people in our community.